Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, there has never been a better time to be a programmer than now. With ChatGPT and Generative AI, you can build anything that you want. It's not going to be fully automated by the computer, but it will be a fantastic aid in getting you to build the thing that you want. Everyone is using it. If you are not using it, it is a mistake. However, ChatGPT has its drawbacks, both when actually using it and long-term consequences like artificial general intelligence. I asked ChatGPT why it is good and why it is bad. It gave me four bullet points for each, so we're going to go through eight this this many eight questions. Good first, bad second. Starting now, creativity. Generative AI can create new and innovative content such as music, art, and writing that can be used for various purposes. Well, I can't really argue with that, can I? Because I am literally using it for this video right now. I've used it for many shorts ideas. I've seen other people like Tech with Tim. Call out if you watch my videos, drop a comment. I would love it, but you probably don't. Guys, this tool is amazing for creators. It's amazing for programmers. It's, uh, well, I mean, it's not so good for art people. We'll probably talk about that. But if you want to do art or music, it's absolutely fascinating. So that's point number one. It's creative flexibility is amazing. Bad number one, bias. Generative AI can inherit the biases of the data it is trained on, which can lead to discriminatory or unfair outcomes. It is learning from us. ChatGPT is like in multiple ways, just learning from all of the stuff that humans have done on say Twitter, on Reddit, on random blogs on the internet. Who is putting these opinions out there? If you if you like have a ton of data that's saying that, you know, insert racist comment here, it might start to believe it. Of course, that's why OpenAI has this reinforcement learning from human feedback thing. If it's saying things that are bad, well, it's we're kind of forcing it to say things that are not so biased. So there's ways around that. However, you can't really, unless you super, super pick apart the data set, the massive, absolutely massive data set that it was trained on, it's pretty difficult to remove all these biases. And also, what even is a bias? Like, opinions are everywhere. What's one opinion being wrong versus one being right? Of course, there's things that might be mean, but, you know, how is that mean versus maybe just stating your opinion? It's a very difficult issue to solve. Number two on good. Efficiency. Generative AI can automate tasks that would otherwise require a lot of time and effort, and creating, such as creating personalized content for individual users. Yeah, it can be a massive time saver. It's not that it's doing stuff that humans are completely impossible, like unable to do. I could do a lot of the stuff that I'm using it for, but it just saves time. I, I realize like I could think about the code I could write for this or learning some uh, a bit of a different language to do it, or I could just ask ChatGPT to do it, kind of fill understand in the, the building blocks of how it's do, done get the IDs and the variable names and put it in the right spot in the files, and hopefully you're good to go. It just saves time. Number two on bad, unintended consequences. Generative AI can generate content that is unintentionally harmful, such as deep fakes or misleading information. Yeah, I mean, it's not really too much on ChatGPT, but uh, the deep fake conversation, if you don't know what a deep fake, deep fake is, well, maybe you've seen them before and not even known, but basically like if you have Obama saying a bunch of stuff about uh, how the world is racist and everyone's out to get him, you, I mean, maybe that's true and maybe people have said that or that's just Obama as a deep fake and it's not something that he really said. There's a lot of things that uh, I made sure to say one that was not really too controversial. There's a lot worse that you can do with that. Generative AI, uh, faking things on real people faking things on fake people uh, is a big problem right now. Number three on good, personalization. Generative AI can personalize content for individual users based on their preferences and interests, creating a more engaging and personalized experience. I am going to say how this is a negative part because chat, I use ChatGPT to create this. And this point number three is really not that different from the other ones. It's really just saying how you can make innovative content. So that I'm turning into a bad. Number three, lack of transparency. Generative AI can be difficult to understand and interpret, making it challenging to identify and correct errors or biases. This is very, very true. Uh, the ways that these systems are like performing inference, they are this massive, massive neural network. It's very hard to look into it. And uh, you can really only look into it through looking the, at the output that it produces. And you can adjust that as they are doing with, uh, with reinforcement learning. However, if you go to an introductory uh, machine learning class, 
you'll see that pretty much the only model that we can understand very, very well is linear regression. And these neural networks are very, very far from linear regression. If you're learning how they work, you know, maybe they're not too different, but from a mathematical point of view, they are absolute black boxes. These things are insanely complicated these days and actually looking into it is insanely difficult. There's a massive lack of transparency on what it's doing. Number four, the last one on good. Research and development. Generative AI can be used to model complex systems and processes, helping researchers and sci scientists to gain insights and develop new solutions. This one is similar. However, I like what it says because there is a lot of stuff right now about how LLMs are, and even ChatGPT-like applications are being very domainized, basically. So you've probably seen stuff like for, you can have ChatGPT for studying. You can have ChatGPT for, um, for medical stuff. We've had a lot of very, very domain-like activities taking these broad sort of artificial general intelligence-like ideas and actually getting subsets from them, which is absolutely fascinating. Number four on bad. Job displacement. Job displacement. Generative AI can automate tasks that were previously performed by humans, potentially leading to job displacement and economic disruption. Economic disruption is not necessarily bad. It's also not necessarily good. Um, however, this whole thing is not necessarily bad. I don't like that it's assuming that job displacement is a bad thing. Humans losing jobs. I'm sorry, if you're not worthy of your job, you're not, like, that's not, it's not, surprising that you're going to be automated like if you're sitting there as a cash I, I if you're making a side hustle and you have a side hustle that's totally fine but at the same time if you are a cashier and you're doing very very simple like computational tasks just moving stuff and doing some number calculation i mean i'm sorry you're probably gonna have your job disrupted one day and you have to plan accordingly uh, there's never been a better time to be a programmer there's never been a worse time to be something that coding can you know, automate right now and some simple robotics as well. So those were the four good and four bad. The good, creativity, efficiency, personalization, and research. Bad, bias, unintended consequences like deep fakes, lack of transparency, they're black boxes. Four, job displacement. I don't, I don't agree with that necessarily being a bad thing, but you know, most people associate it with bad, so that's fair. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you are not already. Drop a like and I'll see you next time.